Hey guys, what's up? This is Mario Party Animal, and I'm actually doing a really special video today because just past weekend, I was actually able to get into the Splatoon Global Splat Test, which was really freaking awesome because if you guys haven't been paying attention, Splatoon is one of Nintendo's newest IP games coming out this May, uh, the 29th, I believe, which is really close from now, and they had a Splatoon Direct, and at the end of that Direct, they actually said that they were going to do a demo. So what Nintendo did that was a little different from regular demos is they didn't have one big demo that lasted that you could play up until the game launched. No, what they did is they actually had um, where you could download the demo and then you could only play three specific sessions while the demo servers were up. So a Friday and a Saturday they had three different play sessions, each were open for an hour. So that's how you had to pretty much get into this demo if you wanted to play Splatoon. I got into two of the three sessions. So there was one session at 10 to 11 on Friday, and then there was one um, 6 to 7 that Saturday morning, and I don't know how many people got into that one, but I didn't even come remotely close. Um, and then there was another one that same Saturday from 2 to 3. So three different game sessions. I got into two out of three of them, so I got to play the game for a total of maybe two hours. Yeah, let's get started, and um, let's start talking about Splatoon Global Splatfest, and what I thought about it. So, one thing with the demo, when you first start it up, when you're actually in the um, playtime for the service to be up, you actually opened up with creating your Splatoon character. So, you actually started up by choosing to be a, either a girl or a boy inkling. I chose the boy both times. Um, and then also you choose uh, your skin tone, which is pretty interesting. So you can choose to be as light as you want to be or as dark as you want to be. They're all realistic skin colors, so you can't be like a blue or a pink splatoon, uh, blue or pink inkling skin tone. You're all regular skin tones. And then you choose your eye color. So as far as that goes, those are the only two things you have as far as customization. You can't change your ear size or your ear shape or anything like that. Your hair changes color during game. So that's something that stays varied, but mainly your eyes and your skin are the only things you get to change color. Alright, and once you're done choosing your character and getting it customized the way you want, then you get thrown directly into a tutorial. The tutorial was really good because, of course, it doesn't, get, it doesn't let you just dive into games, it actually lets you get accustomed to the controls. And the tutorial was actually really good. Um, one thing though, is that as soon as I started playing the game, um, you only have one option of controls in the demo. You could only use the Wii U gamepad. You couldn't use a Wii U Pro Controller. I'm assuming the Wii U Pro Controller is going to be a control option when the game actually launches, um, even if you're playing single player. Of course, it's going to be an option for the second player if you're playing um, Battle Dojo because one person's going to be on the TV and one person's going to be on the gamepad. But as far as on the demo, you could only use the Wii U gamepad. And initially, when you start off the demo, and you get into the tutorial, they only they start showing you off the motion controls. So how the motion controls work is that you basically move with the left stick, and then you look left and right only with the right stick. And then to look up and down, you have to um, hold the Wii U gamepad and then look up and down by motioning it up or down while you're holding it. And then you can um, reset the camera by pressing the Y button. So it was a little weird to get used to at first, um, but after playing around in a couple matches and also running around the tutorial stage a little bit, I got adjusted to it, but not optimally, because I still feel like my reflexes and my aiming was thrown off a little bit, so I had to actually switch the controls to uh, the regular stick, of, aside from the motion controls. When I was playing the game, um, one thing I did notice is um, the way that the Inklings feel when they move. They put really big emphasis on switching into squid form because when you're not in squid form you actually move a lot slower than any other first person shooter I've ever played which is a pretty interesting concept because when you're not in squid form you're basically moving at a decent pace just to cover the stage um, so that makes it easier for you to aim and cover up the, the turf but then when you go into squid form that's basically like your run option so there's no sprint option when you're and inkling form, but then when you actually go into squid form, that's kind of like your way to get manu uh, your maneuverability option. So, um, and also as far as jump height, the inklings can't really jump that high, 
nor in squid form. So you're going to have to actually use the paint and the ink to your advantage by covering up walls, going up into higher ground and stuff like that if you actually want to get the up on your opponents. Okay, so right after you finish the tutorial, you get tossed into the weapon select screen. On the weapon select screen, well, initially in the demo, they gave us four different weapons to choose from out of the three classes of weapons. So the three classes of weapons, if you guys didn't know, they are the uh, blaster guns, which um, include like the splatter shot junior and the splatter shot, and then there are the charger weapons, which is kind of like your sniper class, and then there's the roller option, so the paint roller, the steam roller option which many people are getting really butthurt about during the demo, which I will explain shortly. But let's start off by talking about the splatter shot weapons, or the uh, blaster weapons. So the blaster weapons are kind of like your basic um, are like machine gun, um, rapid fire weapons. Really good to cover lots of ground really quickly. A really good beginner weapon was the splatter shot junior because it had more of a, like a scatter shot as opposed to the splatter shot which had more of a streamlined effect but it did go farther um, and then the the charger weapon was more like a sniper rifle and I'm not much of a sniper myself so when I actually got to use the charger a little bit I didn't really stick to it that much because one I didn't feel like I was shooting fast enough to really, really do much effectivity to my team and also it just, I don't know. I'm not a huge sniper in regular games, so I'm not a huge sniper in Splatoon. Even if it is ink, it still doesn't feel like the same to me. But as far as snipers go, it is a really cool weapon. You have to get out of the mindset that your paint will go as far as a really a regular sniper bullet. Because it's really good for making streamlined, straight shots. Uh, the rollers are basically the heavy, the heavy duty weapons. So with the rollers, they take up a lot of ink, but you can cover a lot of ground with them. And the time that you have and you're almost damn near indestructible when you have them on too um, so basically you just roll over you just put your ink on the ground and you're straight up just rolling and plastering all your turf with your color and you're like I said you're almost indestructible so unless somebody has a long-range weapon if they get in your path ink or gnaw they are getting steamrolled and it is very very powerful people were starting to complain about it because they were saying it needs to be nerfed but one thing I thought that was really effective against it is that if you use the Splattershot Junior and you use the Bubbler, which is a shield, and that was a really cool um, weapon I thought that was effective against the Roller people. Alright, and the main game mode that you got to play with when you were in the demo was basically just Turf War. They give you two maps to play with, um, the Rig level and also the Warehouse level. Uh, the Warehouse level was um, basically one of the more basic levels that they've shown earlier on. So there was one big open area in the middle where everyone was, all the action was basically taking place there. So that was the more point heavy area. But then also on the sides, after you get past your spawn, there were a couple corridors. And if you were to take over those corridors when the other team wasn't looking, that's what was getting most of the points. Because most of the time everyone's trying to fight in the middle and take that big open area. But then one thing you need to realize is that you need to look at your gamepad and notice that people are also taking the smaller corridors as well. So, I like how that level worked out. Um, it was a nice introductory stage. I think almost everyone landed up on that stage first. And then the next level was the, um, the rig. What made the rig different from the warehouse is that there wasn't really... It wasn't an easy way to get to the bigger areas. There were, I think there were two big areas in the, in the rig. There was one on the far side of the map past the spawns, and then there was one initially in the middle between the two spawns farther back behind them. And also to get to these areas you have to also go through lots of corridors that were hanging above the water. So if you fell off the corridors or fell off the paths, that you would, you would basically die and have to spawn back and then um, super jump or make your way through your ink to get to the other areas. I actually really did like this stage because it kind of put emphasis on covering smaller amounts of ground and also trying to get the, um, your teammates to move around through the whole stage instead of concentrating in one area. Because if everyone's all in one spot of the map, like sorry, say farther back, one person could be on the other side of the map in the other big area, like 
painting that area up. So you also have to use your squid form to quickly get through the ink and make sure that you can get everything covered up. And yeah, from basically everything I played, I had a really fun time playing the Splatoon demo. I really, really wish they would have more sessions open, but um, from what I got, the two hours, it, it kind of will hold me off for the next two and a half weeks until the game actually launches at the end of the month. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing the full game, getting to play through the single player campaign, and then also getting to play with the more of the weapons that we're going to get. Um, like I said in the beginning of the demo, you get to customize your skin tone and your eyes, and they actually have preset clothes that you could wear. So you actually didn't get to choose any clothes. So the customization with that, I'm really looking forward to um, trying out in the real game. But yeah, from what I played, it was a really fun demo. Uh, you guys should totally pick up Splatoon at the end of the month on the 29th, which is Friday. And that's perfect. It's a perfect game to start out the summer. So uh, if you guys like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And also be sure to keep an eye out too because I'm going to be posting some Splatoon gameplay and or streaming um, once the game launches. So yeah, thanks for listening and watching guys and um, I'll talk to you guys later. It's my party animal and I'm out of here.